thank God for another moment. I've missed you all. Today, too, promised to be another wonderful issue that we are going to look at it. And I believe that as you've been following us since we started this program, you've been blessed. And today, I promise you, you are going to be blessed. Because the topic that we're going to discuss today is wonderful. Every believer, even those that are not believers, need to be enlightened and be educated on it. What am I talking about? Please stay clue at your set and I'll be right back. I'll introduce my guest and I'll also introduce the topic. This is Cassie TV Pastors Dex program. And as I said earlier on, today we'll be looking at very, very interesting topic. An issue that has been bothering people's mind. And what is it about? People say it is a holy book. Some do say it's a scriptures for, for the Jews. Some do say it's just a word that is from the Lord. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Bible. Do you have a Bible? Have you seen a Bible before? Have you read the Bible? Do you understand what the Bible is? Today, this and many questions, that's why we are here. That's why God has, in his own wisdom and the grace of God, he has brought us wonderful men of God to help us discuss, being educated, being informed about this topic or this theme or this thing called Bible. Please help me welcome my guest. Today, we have our guest, Pastor Abraham Nyanku Jr. is a head pastor or I say the head bishop for Word of Truth Covenant family, family yeah. in Accra. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. You are welcome. Thank you. And also we have Dr. Joshua Ofori, the head pastor, the rest house chapel in Accra. Please, men of God, you are welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, I'll just go straight to you, um, Pastor Abraham. Right. Um, when we talk about the Bible, what is it? What is the Bible? All right. Um, Basically, the word Bible is derived from its uh, Greek Biblis. And the word Biblis simply means books. So, invariably, it's telling you that it's a collection of books. But it's not a collection of books uh, written in the natural, so to speak. But it's a collection of books written by men uh, who were inspired by the Spirit of God. So, I'm sure later on, as we progress into the mm. program, we'll, we'll talk more about that. Mm. But these are men, holy men of God, inspired by God, who wrote these books and they've been put together. Now, at the end of the day, the Bible becomes uh, an account of God seeking to reveal himself to man. That's okay. the way I would describe oh, okay. it. Okay, so basically, it's a book. All right, all right. So, um, um, Dr. Dr. Joshua, um, where, where did it start from? What, what, what is this origination, the Bible? Thank you very much, and I want to say God bless you to your wonderful viewers um, and also for giving us the privilege to come discuss things of this sort that I believe will definitely add up to their lives. Just like my wonderful colleague said here, the, the Bible is sort of a collection of books put together, but in this particular sense, we are not making reference to just ordinary books. I believe that everybody can just rise up and put books together. I, I as a person, have done a couple of books, and, and there are books all over the place, books that gives all kinds of information. But we are talking about a book that is inspired by God, a book that, for me, if, if you ask me, I will say God is the direct author of the Bible. As much as he used human personalities to, to bring it into reality, he is the, the hidden face behind the, the Bible. And I, I must say, it, it all started right from day one. If, if you are to pick it right from the Old Testament through to the New Testament, God started introducing himself. In, in fact, God... Um, it's something that I usually say, God is a communicator. God does not keep to himself. 
God needed, if you read the book of Isaiah, God went to the extent of saying, come let us reason together. God wanted a connection with man. God wanted a relationship with man. And one of the means that God had to use is to inspire men to put together all that he has to communicate to them. And, and for me, I believe that is how the Bible all started. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so, so if, if I get it right, the Bible is a book for God. Sure. But he used men to just make it happen or just write it for, for, for or? Precisely. Okay. When you, when you talk about the inspiration of the scriptures, you know, the Bible declares that uh, scripture is not of private interpretation, mm. but the holy men of God were moved by God and then they began to pen things down. Okay. To be inspired in this term simply means uh, God breathing. So the word inspiration mm. simply means God breathe. From the from the Hebrew, I mean, I mean, for, 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 uh, from the Greek. Okay. So God actually releases His breath into man and takes over man. Mm -hmm. However, man was allowed to use uh, uh, their style of writing. Okay. All right, the way I write will be different from the way you write. Okay. Okay. So maybe you will may, you may write in a humorous manner. I may not write in a humorous manner, okay. but we may all end up bringing up the same information. So when God breathed into man and brought man into inspiration, the message now was sent into the spirit of man, but man was allowed to use his, his style in writing, but he wrote specifically what God wanted him to write. Okay. Now, when you talk about uh, how the whole Bible came about, yeah. it is important to, to remember that writing in itself has a history mm -hmm. and pro it progressed you know, over, over the centuries. So you, you had a period where writing was done on stones, you know, writing was done on clay, moving to uh, uh, skin, moving to papyrus, you know, and then moving to paper and all that. Okay. Now, essentially, the Bible went through the same process, right? So if you read it carefully, you realize, for instance, in the time of Moses, we knew he used stones, yeah. you know, and then he wrote on it. As it progressed, you will see that in the New Testament, for instance, you began to see that they were using parchments and, and, and all that. So, um, uh, if you ask the question, how did the Bible originate? One, the holy men of God were inspired to write. Two, they had to use the medium of writing at their time. Okay. Now, as the years progressed, uh, when the medium of writing was changing, copying was done mm -hmm. onto the next phase of the material that was used. Mm -hmm. So, over time, mm -hmm. it progressed in that manner. And then today, we have all of it put together okay. as, as one book. Initially, it wasn't like that. Okay, okay, all right. That is that. That is great, um, doctor. So, why why was this book written? Why was this Bible written? What's the purpose? Of it? The, the the Bible was definitely written for a purpose, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's a good question you mm -hmm. you asked. Just to um, pick it from wh where he, he yeah. ended, and then I'll I'll still continue with yeah. exactly what you are demanding from me. Um, just like the definition of the Bible is, we have. Um, books being put together and we are looking at different authors that were influenced by God at different points in times and, and it's some, something that also worked through history it happened at various times but I don't know they, they all came together and, and, and to represent the mind of God. Now, if you take a look at, at the book of 2 Timothy, the chapter number 3, which mm -hmm. definitely we can't have such discussion without making reference to this. Sure. The Bible says, sure. all scripture is given mm -hmm. by inspiration. Mm -hmm. It is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay. Basically, this gives us a summary of the reason why the Bible was written. Okay. It was written to get these things across. Okay. Number one, it okay. is written okay. inspired by God. We, 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 we must get it straight that it, it was not men that decided to put their minds together and, and, and feel like communicating something all by themselves, but it was inspired by God. That is to tell you that it was God that moved men. It was God that worked on, on men even to bring out the scripture. And the purpose basically as written here is for correction. 
So the word of God, which is the Bible, is supposed to come our way to bring us correction. In case you are deviating from the path of God, in case you are not doing things right, the word of God, which is the Bible, is supposed to come your way in order to put you back on the right path. And basically, you realize that that was the main purpose of God. God wanted man back. After man deviated from the path of God, God wanted us back to his path. And he went ahead to say, for instruction. I, I see the Bible as, as the manual of life. Um, every every, every um, product that you buy, be it electronic or any other product you can think of, it goes with a manual, even medication. Most of us, we buy drugs and, and we just go for it, but we don't even read what is in there. I quite remember something that happened to me some, some years back. I, I just decided, a drug that was given to me by a doctor, I decided, let me go through it. And I realized that what was in, in the in the paper was far different from what and i realized the doctor was wrong so the manual of life is the bible it is meant to give us instruction and and, and then finally it, it instructs us into the righteousness of god it brings us into the right path when we talk about righteousness we are talking about being in the right standing with god so basically the Bible is supposed to be the manual of our lives that is supposed to direct us. And I believe that if, if you get this right and, and you pick it up and apply it to your life, there is no way you fail. Mm, mm, that, is, that is great. That is great. I mean, um, on, on, on that same ticket, if you said it's, it's, it's the manual, it means that before um, a product is being, is being launched or is being ushered. The manual is already. That's right. But some people argue that the Bible was not seen anywhere when Adam um, and Eve were created. So when did the Bible start being operated or be, be, be in operation? Okay. Because some people do ask that question. Yes, I've heard that it's a manual for life, but some say that it came, it came after maybe um, Jesus left or it came after Susan. So when exactly did, 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 did the Bible came to exist? Okay, all right, so let me pick it up from where uh, my, my, my brother left off. Uh, first and foremost, we know that the Bible basically is divided into two. We have the Old Testament and then, and then, we have, and, and then the New yeah. Testament. Yeah. Where, I mean, a better word, as some people will say, is the use of the word covenants. Because it shows about an old covenant that God had with man okay. and then a new covenant that came into establishment. Okay. All right, now... There was a process actually mm. in putting together mm. all the writings of the Bible like we know. Yes. So you have people like Moses doing his part under inspiration. Right. He moves on. People like Joshua, etc. They are writing. Okay. Now, by the time we got to Ezra, mm. after Israel returned from Babylon, you will recall in both, if you read the book of Ezra carefully and the book of Nehemiah carefully, mm. you realize that Ezra perhaps was the final person along the Old Testament line who put together all the books of the Old Testament okay. at the time, all right? And so uh, we, we, we call it, uh, uh, it uh, we call it canon city. It became canon at the time. Now, when the New Testament began, okay. Jesus quoted from the Old Testament, okay? Now the Hebrew Bible actually is divided into, into, into three. Okay, the law, the prophets, and the writings. So you see Jesus quoting from either the law, or from the prophets, or from the writings. Okay. The apostles also did similar. Okay. In Acts chapter 1, for instance, and, and, and Acts chapter 2, you realize that Peter always will have to quote from either the writings or from the prophets, etc. All right, so you have the Old Testament being approved by the holy men of God, and one man, Ezra. Mm. But before Ezra, what I'm saying is that one by one, they put them together. together. All right. All right. And then it became one. one. When it came to the New Testament era, they were also quoted from the Old Testament. But now the apostles also came under inspiration and they began to write epistles, they began to write letters, etc. Now all these things were also, they were not like a book in those days. They were parchments, one, one in that order. Okay. Now, but something began to happen along the line mm. because the enemy began to creep in and also begin, began to introduce some writings. Okay. So God also put together some men. Some men also were led by the Spirit of God. And they, they, they went through a process mm. to make sure mm. that, that they, 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 they would bring the Bible to a place and a position which became close so that no one else can come and say that I've received another revelation from God to add to the Bible, which we call the canonization process. Right? So you have scholars sitting down mm. and they came together with some standards to follow to make sure that what they are going to select will not be out of place. 
and some of the some of the areas they look at was whether it was the apostles who wrote it, all right, and whether there were issues being derived from the Old Testament. I mean, hmm. in that order. So by them, by, by so doing, they were able to put together the New Testament as 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 one. Now, don't forget this: that originally the Bible was not written in English. We will get there. Okay. Um, uh, it's getting interesting. I uh, I'm being blessed. Um, I've been enlightened. The education is too much. Um, viewers, please don't go anywhere. Um, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Thank you. blessing up so much and even even before we close i still want to thank you for for how far um let's go um dr joshua um let's look at the full component of this of this book called the bible what is the full component of it can you educate us can you inform us well the bible just like my senior man said over here is, is made up of um two let's call it covenants we have the old testament you also have the new testament okay. and that is also not, not to say, it, it, I mean, one is more special than, than the other. For me, I believe that every one of them is, is relevant. I made a statement here from the beginning that God always had a desire to communicate with man. The, the Bible talks about how in the beginning God had to move into the garden in the cool of the day. And, and all he wanted to do was fellowship. In fact, one of the main reasons why God made us was to have fellowship with us. So... He, he, he was seeking a means in, in order to connect with man. And, and one of the main means God uses is, is to get across his word. So the Bible is broken down into two, the New Testament and then the Old Testament. We have all together 66 books, okay. all, all together, inspired by various men at different times, at different points in times. I mean, communicating, and, and, and also not to forget this, the Bible also gives us an interesting, I mean, history of life. It, it makes us get to know what happened right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Reading through the Bible does not just give you instruction and also inspire you and, and, and correct you, but it also makes you get to know who God is. It, it opens your eyes to get to know exactly who God is and, and gives you the opportunity to relate with him. So that is the little I'll say okay. about the Bible. That is good. Um, Abraham. Abraham. Let's look at this. Some say they read the NIV. Mm -hmm. Some say they have the King James. Okay. Some do say they have good news. Okay. In fact, they have various versions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, <laughs> when we go to a church and they say, read this, read this, read this. And even sometimes you could see that their, the interpretation is quite different. Exactly. Why that? Okay. Does it make the book still the same book as it is? Okay, all right. Well, this is a very interesting area <laughs> of, the, of the Bible. Yeah. First and foremost, um, we need to understand that the Old Testament mm -hmm. was written in, in, uh, in Hebrew, mm -hmm. right? And then a bit of Aramaic. Okay. Uh, the Aramaic language is a language that the Israelites, you know, learned and began to speak when they returned from the Babylonian captivity. Okay. Okay. So there are some portions in the Old Testament and you see that are language. language. Now the New Testament was written in Greek. Okay. Also there are some portions where you will see Aramaic. Okay. okay. So actually you realize that Jesus Christ spoke Aramaic as well. Mm -hmm. It is an Aramaic language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 